You're watching Fox 11 News Special Report. And good evening. Welcome to Fox 11 News Special Report. I'm Alex Michelson. And I'm Dr. Drew Pinsky. And Dr. Drew, the big story continues to be about schools, right? And that fight that we see every night. Big concern for many parents. When can their kids get back for in-person learning? The fight continuing in our region's largest district of all, LA Unified. State and county officials have said classrooms are safe to reopen. The risk of getting infected is low if proper precautions are taken. This is especially true when it comes to elementary schools. Yet the LAUSD schools have remained closed. Teachers unions there don't want to send teachers back to the classrooms unless they are all vaccinated. They say it's too much of a risk for the teachers and for the kids. Of course, vaccinating all those teachers could take at least another five to six weeks. That's one of the reasons why they've opened this. This is LAUSD's first COVID-19 vaccination site. It's at the Roy Ball Learning Center in downtown LA. LAUSD Superintendent Austin Butner says it is the first step towards opening classrooms, the first vaccination site to target school employees specifically. Right now, school staff who are older than 65 and district employees who work at coronavirus vaccination sites are the only ones who are eligible for that vaccine. All right, let's bring in L.A. County Supervisor Janice Hahn. Earlier this week, she sent out a tweet that broke the news that schools in L.A. counties would be allowed to reopen. It was the biggest tweet in the history of Twitter. <laughs> now she has one of the biggest followings on all of uh, social media. Um, uh, what a reaction to that. So, so let's talk now uh, for an update on where we're at after that tweet. What do you make of what has happened? Some districts going back, some districts not. Where are we at right now? Well, first of all, I was pretty excited, and that's why I tweeted so quickly. When I heard um, that LA County had reached that miracle threshold um, where we had the lowest number of cases for five days so that our schools could reopen, I thought the public was ready to hear a bit of good news. So the, the idea is schools can reopen. Uh, we had five days in a row of cases that were under 25 per 100,000. So that was the magic number. Now, whether or not schools actually reopen will depend on the school district, the agreement with the teachers, and whether or not parents even feel like they're ready to send their kids back to school. Supervisor, I have a question. That number 25 per 100,000 was something set by the CDC. It seemed like the teachers union kept kept pointing at the old California tier system of purple versus red, where we had to get below seven per 100,000, which may never happen. They may actually never happen. Why is there that disparity? Yeah, and, and let me just add to that the UTLA statement. Let's put it up on the screen because it brings up exactly what Dr. Drew is saying. Um, here is uh, what they had to say. We are deeply concerned about comments by members of the LA Board of Supervisors Advisors calling for in-person elementary instruction while LA County remains in the deep purple tier. Your reaction? Well, they must be talking about me uh, because <laughs> I certainly have been one of those who has been urging us to get our kids back to school. And I'm doing that because I'm hearing from parents. I'm even hearing from, from kids who knew that kids really wanted to get back to school so desperately. Um, but, you know, a lot of parents are having trouble homeschooling their kids. They were never, uh, they never had their teacher certificates, so they're having a tough time. Also, all those parents that have had to go back to work for the last year. They were the essential workers who have been sent into the workplace every day, and their kids were home trying to navigate this virtual distant learning. Many uh, homes we know had struggled with Wi-Fi connections. So I think there is a, a major push to get our kids back in school. Um, and I understand how teachers may feel like it's not quite safe yet. I think they should be vaccinated. I was one of those that wrote the governor a couple of months ago and said, I thought teachers should go to the head of the class um, when it comes to vaccinations. Um, because we do know some of our teachers might have underlying health issues. Some of them might be older. And I understand that. But I think if we're ever going to reopen our economy, if we're ever going to get back to any sense of normalcy, we got to get our kids back to school for in-person learning. Maybe not for everybody. Maybe there'll still be some hybrid uh, situations in some school districts so that kids and parents still want to do virtual learning they can but I know in my district in LA County some school districts are already going to open immediately because they I, can. 
I, I've also wondered why we can't have more than one priority as we roll out vaccines. Why can't we say, in addition to 65 plus, we want to get those teachers K through five. Let's get them up to the front of the line immediately, like you say, and not just the older, not just the frail. Get them all. Get them done. It's, imp it's as important we save lives as getting kids back to school. Why can't we have more than one priority? What's wrong with the health department that they seem to be unable to adjust to current circumstances? Well, the reason why we can't we can have more than one priority, but then it gets, you know, diminished because we don't have enough vaccines. It's sort of like the Hunger Games, right? Who goes next? The 65 year olds, those with underlying health conditions, the grocery workers who frankly have been in those stores for the last year with a thin sheet of plexiglass between them and the customers or the dock workers who are moving our goods every day. I mean, which group gets to go next? And that's part of the problem because we don't have enough vaccines. But I do think um, if we are going to reopen our schools, and I feel like most people really want that to happen, we need our teachers to get vaccinated. Um, so I'm one of those that thought we should have teacher appreciation vaccination week at Dodger Stadium or some other big site so we could just take right. care of our teachers, vaccinate them, and, and do what we know is right by sending them back into the classroom, but having them be protected. Well, well, uh, extra points for the uh, Hunger Games reference, and we'll see who is Katniss in this uh, scenario. Uh, so it's let, let's, terrible. Let, but but the, the UTLA position is, look, we don't feel like it is, is safe uh, because we, we see high coronavirus in L.A. County, LAUSD specifically, a lot of low-income neighborhoods, density in terms of housing, high percentage of coronavirus, and so they feel like it's not safe, not okay for them to go into the classroom, and it could take a month or two or or more for all teachers to get vaccinated. Is it your perspective that regardless of whether all of them are vaccinated, it get some, you know, get everybody should go back in the classroom? Well, I am really, no, I used to be a classroom teacher, by the way, hard to believe. Um, and so I do have a lot of empathy towards the classroom teachers. Um, they really uh, put themselves in harm's way in all sorts of uh, ways in their lives. But um, I do think it's important to get our kids back to school, particularly in those communities that you just referenced. Those are the students that lost a year. And honestly, we don't know academically how much that has harmed them, nor do we know how much that's harmed them mentally. Um, I think keeping our kids at home in this weird virtual distant learning scenario you know, is causing some damage that may not be recovered um, in a year. And I certainly don't want those kids in those communities to be farther behind academically in a place where they may never catch up. So we've got to work together. I feel for the teachers. I want them vaccinated. Um, but I will say in other parts of the country, elementary schools have been reopening. Mm -hmm. And according to Dr. Fauci or the CDC, we have not seen a surge in cases in those areas where elementary schools have opened with safety protocols in place. So I'm sort of betting on they're, they're right. going to be safer in school. Um, safer at home just doesn't seem to be working anymore for a lot of families. And I want to rescue them. I want to rescue those parents uh, from those daily uh, lesson plans sure. and i want to get our kids back back in school as safely as possible and not only other parts of the country as you mentioned other parts of the county we are seeing a kids mm -hmm. back in school and it being done safely here in la county and in it's other true. surrounding there are a lot of counties school as well. you know we have 80 school districts in la county so right. LAUSD is the biggest one and right. i really want to work with them but we have lots of school districts who are ready to open and get kids back to school let's talk about another I, issue I, uh, real quickly um, which is a, a yeah. big deal today announced between governor newsom and top lawmakers it's a spending bill the budget is going to include direct payments to low-income residents, $600 payments. Last hour, I spoke live with Assembly Speaker Anthony Rendon, one of the guys who negotiated this deal. He told me who qualifies for that check and what kind of relief small businesses is gonna, are going to get. Here's some of that. First of all, this, this is cash relief. It's real relief for low-income Californians, and it's really geared towards those who are most in need. It's for, for critical needs such as paying bills and, and, and those types of things. It's a one-time $600 payment to Californians who are receiving EITC, that's our Earning Income Tax Credit uh, Program, for 2020. 
uh, families who are on CalWORKs or SSI uh, or uh, CAPI will uh, receive the payment automatically within the next couple of months. The economy of my district is dominated by, by small businesses in Southeast Los Angeles County. So we're quadrupling the funding for small business grants. So we're going from $500 million to over $2 billion. We're gonna give $25,000 grants to help small businesses pay the bills. And again, it's, it's to pay the bills, it's to keep the lights on. So here's more on that bill. Uh, so it's $600 checks for 5.7 million Californians, $2 billion in grants for small businesses, fee waivers for 59,000 restaurants and bars, $35 million for food banks, $100 million in financial aid for low-income community college students. This officially needs to be approved by the legislature, uh, but the fact that the governor and the leaders of both branches are announcing it means it's pretty good chance that it's going to be, be almost impossible for it not to be. So, Supervisor Hahn, L.A. County, which has been in desperate need of money for a long time, what specifically does this mean for L.A. County, and how does this change things for you? Well, yay for California. You know, yay for Speaker Rendon, yay for Governor Newsom, yay for all of those who worked long and hard. Uh, Speaker Rendon looked a little tired there. Uh, I know he was negotiating over the weekend. Uh, but yay for us, because you know what? We're still waiting for the federal government uh, to pass their stimulus checks and get those checks in the mail. So good for us that we're taking care of Californians. And there's something in that for everybody. There's stuff in there for low-income residents, for small businesses, for restaurants, for bars. There's food bank money in there. And I, that's really welcome to L.A county i know my office does regular food banks every month and there's so many more families that are using that there's financial aid in there for for students uh, going to college and the best part for me is the money that's going to be coming to small businesses our small businesses have it's been a disaster for them last year. Um, every time we had to shut something down or limit capacity or put a, a damper in their customer base, I felt terrible because I knew that we were hurting people's livelihoods while we were trying to protect public health. It was a terrible position for us to be in. I am so proud of California for doing this. People need this money now. We know people are uh, you know, having tough times paying their rent. We know people who are property owners are having a tough time paying their mortgages because their renters aren't paying their rent. Um, people are hurting. This has been such a horrible year um, last year for Californians, and I'm so proud of us. And what's great is that $600, $600 check for people will be on top of, hopefully, that $1,400 check uh, coming from the federal government eventually. So people will actually get $2,000. They, they need it. They deserve it. And you know what? They've earned it. Uh, we've made it very difficult for them to earn their money. Uh, but but this is so welcome, and that will help L.A. County tremendously. Thank you to all those in Sacramento. I'll uh, never say another bad thing about Sacramento again. Okay, we're def that's definitely not true. But uh, we appreciate you <laughs> saying that. We can keep that, uh, that video uh, as well. Uh, by the way, that $1,400 from the federal government, most likely to come in late March, assuming that Democrats pass that bill. Right now, they do not need Republican support in order to pass it. Uh, Supervisor, great to see you. We appreciate you sharing Thanks, your perspective. Supervisor. Thank you so much. Good to see both you guys. Bye. Have a good Thank night. You. Still to come.